our Mount Zion Pentecostal Church family and to all of our friends and partners joining from all across the country and the world. I'm Pastor Oren Boyd Jr. I'm the senior pastor of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church of Washington, D.C. This is my lovely wife, First Lady Courtney Boyd. Good morning. Good morning. And we're joining you today uh, for our Sunday morning worship experience. And so you know what to do as you come in, uh, Sister Tia and uh, Sister Carla and Elder Janice Cummings have already done it. Say good morning to us. Yes. Sister Adrian Ramsey has done it. Trevardo has done it. Mother Brenda Short has done it. Make your way down to the front row of the virtual sanctuary and settle in. Send up those hearts and send up those likes and share, share, share. Yes. God bless you, Brother BJ, Brother Joseph. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Carol Ramsey. To each of you coming in today, God bless you, Sister Lisa. Come on down to the front row. Brother come Roger down. Ramsey, come on down to the front row. Brother Herbert Law, God bless you. Yes. Brother Christopher Bland, God bless you. Sister Michelle, God bless you. We're praying for you. Yes, 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 we are. Elder Sue Jones. Sister Doris Stevens, God bless each of you. Brother Reginald Williams, this is the day the Lord has made. Yes, it is. God bless you, Elder Pusley, to the Pusley family. Brother Devin, front row bound, that's it. Come on, sir. Good morning, Brother Clarence Ramsey, Sister Valerie, Sister Denise Petropa. Sister Shay Rome, God bless each of you. Good morning. Love you so much. It's a joy to see you coming in this morning. Sister Catherine Ortega, God bless you. Good to see you. Sister Tish, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Yes. Sister Tammy and the Colette family, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Come on down. And while you're coming down, send up those hearts. That's right. And share. Come on, let's share. Let's spread the word. We've got an awesome, awesome 
uh, supplies for you today, and I'm excited about what God is going to do. God bless you, Sister Brenda Williams. Good to see you this morning. God bless each of you coming into the virtual sanctuary. This is our time of morning glory. Morning glory is the time where we just lift up the Lord and praise Him and magnify Him. God bless you, Sister Buana. Front row, hand and pad. That's it. That's right. God That's bless right. you, Brother Wally, Sister Bola. So good to see you today. Glory to God. I'm telling you, we have a treat for you today. I'm so, so excited yes. about the word of the Lord and the ministry format that we have for today. You better share. You don't want your friends to miss this today. That's right. That's right. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I believe it's going to be life changing. I believe that deliverance is going to come through the word of the Lord this morning. God bless you, Elder Tim. Good to see you. Minister Vivian, God bless you in your seat. Glory to God. All right. God bless you, Mother Sufus. Love you dearly. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Liddy. Good to see you. Come on, come on, come on. The front row is prepared for you. You're a VIP. If you've never been a VIP before, you're a VIP today. God bless Reverend Cutler and Mother Cutler. Good God to see you. you. God bless you. And welcome to the longest front row in, in the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Come on down and God. take your seat. Yes. God bless you, Sister Althea Green. Somebody go to clapping for all the VIPs that, that are coming in. Put some claps in the chat. Put some claps. This is for all the VIPs coming into service this morning. You see them, right. a, a stream coming down to the front row. Very important person. Yes. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Harriet. Mm. Glory to God. God bless you, Brother Thomas. Good to see you today. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Mother Constant. Mother birthday. birthday and happy birthday to you. I remember your birthday is three days after mine. Happy birthday. We love you so much. Good to see you. Oh, I see everybody clapping for the VIPs. Coming yes. down to the front row. Glory to God. Yes. And you are very important people to God. Yes, you, you are. are. Very important people to God and to us. We thank God for you. Amen. God bless you, Brother Carlos, Sister Denise. Oh, my one of my mentors. His one of the things in the church is all people matter to God. That's this right. is Jack Bond. All right. people matter to God. You are a VIP. If you ever went to a conference and you couldn't get a seat because it was VIP city, not today. You're the VIP. Come on down to the front row of the virtual experience where the power of God is moving, where life changing is happening. We give God glory and praise today. We serve a glorious God. And we come to praise him and to lift him up and to magnify him today. As you're coming in, make sure you take a minute. Uh, to send up some hearts and to share. Make sure you share. Those that you're connected to need to be a part of this worship experience. God bless you, man of God. Brother Daniel, Minister Daniel Lejeu. God bless you, sir. So good to see you from Uganda. Came and ministered to us a few years ago and blessed us in a tremendous way. I believe that was 2019. We thank God for you. God bless you, Sister Lisa Jackson. Good to see you this morning. And Sister Dorothy. God bless you. Good to see Praise you this God. morning. Praise God. I am so excited about service this morning. Yes. I just had an anticipation. Um, just waiting for the word to go forth, waiting for the fellowship of the saints. Uh, I am encouraged just to be in the midst of the saints. There's, a blessing. No, there's nobody in this world like the saints. God bless the people of God. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you, Sister Mayamu. Good to see you this morning. Come on, let's give God the glory this morning. As you're settling in on the front row, be sure to share and to connect with those that you are connected to in yes. social media world so that they can receive the word this morning. Call your nephew. You know he likes to sleep late. Text your niece. Tell her it's time to get the service. Yes. Glory to God. We are expecting God to do something great for us today. God bless you, Sister Thomasina. Good to see you. God bless you, Sister Kyra. Let's celebrate our king. I love to hear you pray and call him O King. O King. O King. Glory to God. God 
God bless you, Sister May Reed and Pastor Reed and Deacon Granddaddy on the front row where you belong. God bless you all. Come on, let's celebrate God today. God bless you, Mother Rosie. We love you so much. Glory to God. God bless you. I want to thank God for those that are joining us on our conference line this morning. Uh, to Mother Florine Callens, our church mother, to Mother Stella Hawkins. God bless you, Sister Helen Simon, Sister Remetro Thomas, Sister Dorothy Jackson, Sister Nancy Smith, Sister D.D. King, Brother George Williams, and others are joining in even right now. We thank God for those on our conference. I love you so much. Love you. Welcome to the front row. Right. You're on the front row on the conference line, and we thank God for each of you. Glory to God. I love it, Brother Herbert. That's it. Let's bombard heaven and ask God to move through the word. As you're praising God, just say, Lord, speak to my heart today. Speak to my heart. Speak to my life today. Come on, Sister Maria. We got a seat for you on the front row. Come on in. God bless you, Minister Patricia. Good to see you this morning. God bless you, Brother Bobby Cannon. Love you all. Good to see you in the virtual sanctuary today. God bless you. God bless you. Take a seat and get comfortable. There is a word from the Lord just for you. Amen. And then share, share and share come on push it out if you haven't shared yet find that share button and share so that someone you're connected to can receive god bless you sister sheila thomas good to see you this morning god bless you sister mary if i remember correctly i believe you're related to elder Pusley. if i remember correctly so good to see you uh, this morning in the worship experience how many of you know that we serve a great God? Come on, somebody. Declare that he's a great God. He's a great God. He's glory. He's my great God. He's a great. That's right. One pew. One pew. <laughs> with one accord. All in one place. In the virtual sanctuary. We're assembled together whether you know it or not. Yes. Glory to God. We're not in the physical building, but we're assembled together under the mighty hand of God. We're assembled together in spirit. We're assembled together in expectation. And we're believing our great God to do something great in our life today. Yes, God. Hallelujah. The virtual upper room. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord. This is the virtual upper room. Glory and listen, God. when the people of God get together with one accord, praising and lifting up the Savior, hallelujah, he comes in. He comes in. His power falls. And where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell a old Pentecostal holler down in my soul. Woo, we bless the name of the Lord today. We bless the name of we the Lord. We give God the glory. We thank God we're in the month of March. And I'm excited about the teaching for this month and what yes. God is going to do for us through this time of teaching and impartation. Our theme for the month of March is authentic. Authentic. And we're going to be digging into this and dealing with what it really means to be real people, yes. real worship, and real ministry. That's yes. what God, that's our mantra, what God has called us to. We're not playing. This is not a game. That's right. This is real. And so we give God praise, and we're going to be talking about, throughout the month of March, authentic, what it really means, and how do we uh, really pull off the mask and uh, pull back all of those things that hinder us 
from really just having that experience with God. And I believe that God is going to break yokes and destroy yokes in the lives of his people. I see you coming out with a praise that you've never had before. I see you coming out with a glow in the Holy Ghost. I see you coming out perfected in the things of Christ. I see you coming out walking and moving under the anointing of God. I see you coming out as a terror to the enemy because you have spent time with God. You've got in touch with the real God and God is doing great and mighty things in you and through you. I see it happening in your life through the word of God and through the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. This is your time. This is your season to experience the outpouring of God's favor. This is your time. This is your season to find out that you're not a throwaway, that you're not trash, that you're not leftovers, but you are God's anointed. And as you tap into who God has called you to be, to see his power resting upon your life, as you tap into who God has made you to be, to see him moving through you and reminding you that he loves you, that you are his best. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is going to do in our lives through this season of teaching on authenticity, being authentic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm almost ready for the word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you glory for who you are. Lord, throughout this virtual sanctuary, we ask, oh God, that you would move by your power, move by your strength. God, we ask that you would have your way in our midst today. Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts, Lord, that whatever you want to do, that it would be done in us. Lord, we thank you now for this opportunity and this mode and means by which we gather and we worship you. Our worship, let it be for real. Let it be received in heaven as a sweet fragrance of glory that has come up from the earth unto you. And Lord, we'll be thankful and give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Well, praise we thank God. God for this opportunity to come together today um, just to share with you. Uh, again, I'm Pastor Oren Boyd, the senior pastor here at the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. God bless you, First Lady Robertson. Good to see you. Uh, this is my lovely wife, of course, First Lady Courtney Boyd. And we're just blessed of the Lord. This is the first Sunday in the month of March. And you may notice today that uh, normally on first Sunday, I'm wearing a, a black suit and I'm wearing my uh, clerical clergy collar uh, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. But in keeping with the theme of authentic, uh, today I decided to just put on a jacket and a, uh, a shirt, no tie, uh, because it's while we, we appreciate those various um, elements that represent uh, various aspects of our faith. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing is, is that we be real with God. Amen. And so today we will celebrate the Lord's Supper, but uh, I'm going to do it in a suit jacket and an open collared dress shirt. Glory to God. And, and uh, we just appreciate God uh, for this opportunity uh, to come together and to worship with you. We had another great week of, of ministry. Our 6.30 a.m. prayer um, has just been uh, God has continues to take us uh, from level to level, and so many are engaging and joining in um, in that prayer. Our 7 p.m. prayer on Thursday night um, has just been anointed. The intercessors are tapping in. God is bringing a unity um, in uh, through prayer, and uh, it has just been tremendous. Um, on uh, Friday night, the women of the Lord had a beautiful yes. uh, session together. I think Pamper, Pamper Pearls and, and prayer. And prayer. Glory to God. Yes. And uh, that was just a very, very powerful session. Monday night, we had a powerful session uh, with the men of the Lord. And so it's just been, it's ministry happening almost every day. And I'm going to tell you something. The noonday Wednesday unscripted session on Zoom. Yeah. If you have not tapped in to unscript it, on Wednesday at 12 noon on Zoom. If you're free, if you're available, yes. you owe it to yourself to tap in. Uh, God gives us some revelation yes. and uh, it's a, just a very relaxed time for us to, to share the things of the Lord and to be uh, built up according to the principles of God. And so if you've not had a chance to tap into that 12 noon unscripted on Wednesday uh, via Zoom, uh, I want to encourage you to make it your business to, to do that, to join yes. us. 
Well, um, before I go any further, uh, we have our first lady here with us. I want to give her an opportunity to, uh, to greet us this morning and uh, say hello. Well, hello to everyone and God bless each of you. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're just grateful to be here one more time. Uh, just uh, the old saints used to sing a song that says, just another day that the Lord has kept me. And I, 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 I feel like one of the old saints today that it's just another day that he kept me. And I'm certainly grateful for his keeping power. Uh, we certainly appreciate the this past week as pastor shared on the different, uh, different areas of ministry that were served this week. We also love our pastor so much and we're so grateful that we were able to celebrate his 51st birthday. Uh, so thank you to all of you who supported that and I'm sure he'll talk about that some more. Uh, but I'm just excited about the word today. I'm excited about this theme. Isn't it ironic that we are in the season when we have to don a mask? We have to wear a mask when we leave out of the house. We encourage you to continue to wear your mask when you're outside of the house. But when we, but when we come before our savior, it's so beautiful that we can remove our mask. We can remove the veil. We can remove all of the things that are keeping us uh, from a real and authentic relationship, authentic communion, authentic uh, devotion to the Lord. And he sees us, he sees us and loves us the same. That's what's so beautiful. There's a scripture that talks about, oh, that we would know the depth and the width and the breadth of God's love. And as, as we really grasp the love of God, then we can really step into the authenticity of who we are and allow him to make us who he would have us to be. So God bless each of you. I love you so much. I'm excited about the word today. I know we have several birthdays in the month of, of March. So we just want to shout out all of you who have birthdays yes. in the month of March. We celebrate your life. Uh, and we're so thankful that you are a part of our community. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, honey. And uh, um, I want to say, um, uh, I have a video that I'm going to share in a moment. Uh, I have a, um, I guess you could call it a ritual uh, that I go through um, on my birthday. And I'm grateful to God for 51 years. And uh, First Lady, you, for those of you all don't know, First Lady's a little bossy. She bosses me around, but, I but it's okay. I only boss him. That's all. I it's only okay. boss him. I, I allow her to boss me around. But um uh, on my birthday, I like to take time to personally appreciate everyone who took time to remember me. It's kind of a tradition I started many years ago uh, to try to do that, to personally, to personally uh, thank each person that has remembered my birthday or expressed something to me. It's not always easy. And um, let me just say, sometime I, I, I miss the mark, uh, but I enjoy doing that because I think if you took time to appreciate me, uh, that it's fitting that I take time to appreciate you. And so I'm in process, uh, but the overwhelming love was so great that it may take me a while. So what I did was I recorded a message for you. And so if I don't get to you, if it takes me a little while to get to you, I want you to receive this message now uh, that's going to come up on your screen and um, it will at least speak some of the sentiments of my heart. Well, God bless you to my Mount Zion Pentecostal Church family and to all of our friends and partners that are joining from near and far. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for helping me to celebrate my 51st birthday. Wow, what an awesome time of celebration it was. And I certainly uh, can say that it is the best birthday celebration that I can remember. Uh, to my lovely wife, thank you so much for making sure that I was remembered and appreciated on my birthday and to the committee that worked to ensure that everything was seamless. My heart has been made full uh, by the celebration, the warm words, the uh, love tokens, the cash apps. I'm telling you, uh, it has just been uh, one for the record books. I wanna say to someone that maybe is going through a season where you don't feel appreciated, I've been there. Just remain faithful and keep doing what God has put in your heart to do and I promise you, he won't disappoint you. Your season is coming as well. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart 
I love each and every one of you, and I look forward to doing another 51 years with you. God bless you. Amen. So I hope that you will receive that as a down payment on my personal thanks to each of you. I'm telling you, uh, it, it was just a tremendous, tremendous time. And my heart has been made full uh, by what you have done. Well, uh, it's time for the word. Uh, just let me share one announcement. Many people have been asking about our Sunday school hour. Our Sunday school hour will return via Zoom on March 21st. That's not next Sunday, but the third Sunday of the month, our Sunday school will return on Zoom at 10 o'clock a.m. And you'll get all of the login and uh, information. And uh, you can come to Sunday school. It will be from 10 to 10.50. And then you'll have just a few moments uh, between uh, then. Don't y'all try to make me cry today, all right? I'm, I'm trying to get ready for the word. But um, thank you all so much. Uh, but anyway, our Sunday school will return from 10 a.m. to 10.50. You'll have a few minutes to get ready for service at 11 o'clock um, a.m. Um, as we will uh, share. So that's March 21st. Mark your calendars. Uh, there's some other things going on this week, but for, uh, for those that it pertains to, you'll get that information pushed out to you. Of course, we'll be back with our Bible study on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Glory to God. Well, we're going to open up the atmosphere. I have a special treat for you today because First Lady and I are going to minister together. We're going to do a new school tag team um, as we share and talk about authentic and uh, share the word of the Lord with you. I really believe uh, this is going to bless your life today. I, I believe this is going to bless your life. So let's open up the atmosphere with the time of worship. And in just a few moments, First Lady and I are going to share the word of the Lord with you that the Lord has laid on our heart. God bless you. worship the Lord. Anybody want to be purified today?
on the song says, clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you. I want to burn for you. Only you. Take my life. Take my life. As a sacrifice. As a sacrifice. I want to burn for you. Only for you. Come on, clean my hands. Clean my hands. Purify. of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Be glorified in this virtual sanctuary. And we'll give you thanksgiving for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody want to be close to him? Let him refine you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless his Glory name. Glory to God. Well, we bless God this morning and we thank bless God again name. for each of you joining us. Listen, Glory if you've not shared yet, if you've not taken time to share, uh, I want to encourage you to share right now yes. so that you can uh, uh, allow those that you're connected to to thank come Jesus. into this moment in time of worship and the impartation of God's word. Uh, well, it's just a pre preface as we prepare to go to the word today and we're going to John chapter four, the gospel of John chapter four, and we're going to share from a passage of scripture there uh, today. Uh, but just as by way of preface, um, I'm grateful to God for um, my wife, a first lady uh, that God brought into my life many, many years ago when she was uh, um, just uh, uh, barely legal. <laughs> she had just turned 18 when we first met. At that time, I was 27. And um, our life path went went different ways. And then at the right time, at mm. the opportune time, God brought us back together, first as friends, and then um, as um, husband and wife, to do life together and to share life. And we've always had a sense and an understanding that um, our life um, is about uh, ministry. Yeah. We've always understood that. And so as we go forth in ministry, uh, we um, understand that uh, life will come and try to disrupt what God has brought together for his glory, mm. uh, for the kingdom. And so I always tell people, particularly in our Be Harmony marriage ministry, which is every third, I uh, put in a plug for Be Harmony, every third Thursday night, uh, yes. We do our couples ministry for married couples and Powerful. those that are uh, significantly dating. And I always remind couples that marriage is a ministry. It is, uh, there's work that is involved. And uh, that ultimately, as you do the work and allow your marriage to be a ministry, God, over he gives you an overabundant uh, joy and peace and contentment and fulfillment within the marriage. Yes. And it allows you then to go on to the ministry that God has called you to do. And every ministry is not a pulpit ministry. There's some ministries that um, take place within the community, on, on the job, various places. And so 
um, God brings uh, people together for a purpose. Mm. And I believe that we are living through a very critical, critical time, uh, not only as we're watching the um, unfolding and hopefully um, we're nearing the end of a pandemic, but there's so many different things that are happening in the body of Christ, within the church, the global church. So many things that are happening within communities, within the family structure. There's so many intersections between faith and government and community um, and um, education, uh, science. And so we're living in a very, very critical hour. And so uh, one of the things that I think is essential is that we uh, learn how to be real, mm. just to be real. And so this, uh, this week, as I was laboring to prepare the word um, and to minister, uh, the Lord reminded me uh, that when Adam was in the garden, uh, Adam had a great task, a great responsibility. And uh, the Lord looked at Adam there in the garden. And I believe if you could just allow me to use a sanctified imagination this morning that God just shook his head looking at Adam. He said, poor Adam, there he is down there with all of the responsibility uh, that I've given him. In fact, Adam really had the weight of the world <laughs> on his shoulders because it was just him. And I think God looked at him and just shook his head and he said, I will prepare for him a help me. And so I came to First Lady and I, I asked her, I said, so why did God give um, Eve to Adam? She said, uh, because he needed some help. I said, well, I need some help preaching this morning. So you're going to help me uh, to preach as we delve into this um, uh, topic of authentic. So let's go to John chapter four uh, today. And we want to begin reading at verse one. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. And it reads, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to a Samaritan village, a Sinchar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift that God has for you and who was speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. The woman says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think that you are greater than our ancestors, Jacob? who gave us this well, how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I give will never be thirsty again. It, be, it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water then I will never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and you aren't married to the man that you are living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. And we're gonna stop with verse 19 today. It says, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So we want to talk, begin talking um, about um, what it means to be authentic uh, mm -hmm. today. And just to give you uh, a few things, I want to first, as I always do, give you the definition of authentic. The word authentic means not false or copied, genuine, real, having an origin supported by unquestionable evidence, authenticated representing one's true nature or beliefs. 
true to oneself or to the person identified, trustworthy and reliable. That is the definition of authentic. Now we're broaching this subject because I realize we've not taken time to really give voice to the mantra of our church, to really delve into our mantra of real people, real worship and real ministry. And I think it's critical that we understand why that is the mantra of our church. You know, roughly every 20 years or so, every generation, the church goes through a shifting. It goes through a transition. Um, the tide of ministry changes. And that's because there is a different level of requirement from the harvest. The harvest is looking for something different. And too often the church is late to understand uh, what is required of the harvest. We're living in a day and time to where the harvest is saying that if I'm going to adopt uh, your faith, if I'm going to give audience to uh, your uh, confession of faith and to your evangelistic efforts, I need to know that what you're talking about is real, that it goes beyond sound and theory, that it goes beyond an emotional expression and outbreak uh, that is not matched by a soberness of mind and the ability to live out that faith in between those um, moments of ecstasy. Mm. The harvest is demanding something different. And this has, been, um, this has been complicated or it's been made even more vivid because of uh, many of the scandals and things that have happened and transpired in the church. The harvest is saying that um, I see um, a disconnect between your preaching and teaching and the lives of those that are connected to the message from the highest levels of the episcopacy to the leadership, uh, to the leaders, to the members. I need to see something that is authentic because I don't want to attach my faith or my confidence to something that is not real. And so while there was an age where people were drawn to the church because of the excitement, uh, because of the melodious singing of choirs that they had never heard before, uh, the rhythmic expression of preaching from dynamic uh, uh, expositors of the word, uh, people were drawn to the church because of uh, beautiful facilities that were uh, erected beautiful interior design of facilities. People were drawn to the church uh, for all of these different reasons. Now the harvest is saying, show me something that is authentic, something that is genuine, something that is real, something that can be supported by unquestionable evidence. This is the test that the harvest is applying if they're going to be a part of your church. Show me that it's real. Show me that if you preach that you can live free and separated from sin in this present world, show me people that are living holy. Don't just teach me about holiness, but show me people that are literally allowing the purification of the Holy Ghost um, to work in their life. And so it's important, brothers and sisters, that we be real people, that we remove the mask, and that we have encounters that refine us to reflect who God is has called us to be. So as you look at this text here in, in John chapter four, and First Lady and I both have preached from this text, I guess, multiple times. Um, um, I preached, it was one of the texts that I preached from very early in my ministry. And by the way, people aren't necessarily looking for cute sermons with three points and a close. People are looking for something that will penetrate their heart and that they can apply to their life. Amen. Uh, so we preached from this text and talked about this text where this woman uh, meets Jesus at the well. Mm -hmm. And this is a very real, authentic experience. Yeah. Um, the Bible says that Jesus needed to go through Samaria, that, that he there was something that drew him to Samaria, to this encounter with this woman. And this woman's life is really fascinating. If, if you look at it, uh, we see her coming to the well and, and uh, she's there um, at the well and has this encounter with Jesus. And I know there were some things that you were sharing with me that you see in the text about just the realness, the authenticity of this encounter, the, the genuine nature in which it unfolds 
in the life of, of this woman. So you want to talk about that a little bit this morning? Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. There's so much in this text. This yes. is this is such a powerful text of how God is so intentional uh, to find us exactly where we are. And I know Pastor has shared a quote, something like this, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit and just share with you that God does not meet us where we pretend to be, but he meets us exactly where we are, wherever that is. He seeks encounters with us to meet us exactly where we are. And we see here in the text that um, here in the King James Version, it says that he must needs go, that he that that he had to go through Samaria. That was not the route that would have typically been taken uh, for him to get to where he was going. But he detoured and he must need it to go through. And I know that doesn't sound grammatically correct, but that is how the text reads, that he needed to go through Samaria. And when I think about that, I think about the fact when it talks about this text, Pastor, the only thing that Jesus did in Samaria was have that encounter with the woman. Right. So that lets us know that he needed to go to have this encounter with this woman that the world had thrown had thrown away, that she was so sh uh, full of shame because of her past. And, um, and as I read this text, it shows that Jesus is always welcoming us yes. uh, to be real. He's always welcoming us. As we look at the conversation that he was having with the woman pastor, when he began to, he asked her for water and she began to say, well, surely you don't want me to give you water. I'm a Samaritan woman, right? So that already goes to show that culture had already divided her right. from right. her help. And many times the way the world is, we feel based on whether it's church culture, based on whether it's a secular culture, when we really need help, we feel disconnected from our help because of the state that we're in. Absolutely. But Jesus welcomed a closer encounter with her and he said, no, no, I want you to give me drink. And he gave her drink and then he began to ask her questions. And I'm gonna uh, pass it back to you, Pastor. Uh, I just want to, well, sorry, go ahead. You, no, I was just going to make, I was going to make a comment that, that something about authenticity that is, um, is so important. Um, customarily the Jews didn't travel through Samaria, yes. Samaria or have interaction with Samaritans. And, and the history behind that is, is that the Samaritan people were very opportunistic mm -hmm. in terms of their relationship with God. They served God when it was convenient but they, uh, their faith was not pure. Um, in other words, they didn't follow all of the customs of the faith. They kind of picked and choose much, uh, I guess, uh, kind of how we do today. For sure. And the Jewish people tend to be much more devout in terms of the practice of their faith. Even if their heart wasn't right, the practice of their faith was more pure, more devoted yeah. than the Samaritan people. So the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. But one of the things about authentic people is, Authentic people don't allow tradition to put them in the box. Mm. They don't allow traditions. They don't allow uh, uh, rules and regulations that do not conform to truth and reality to keep them from walking in purpose. Yeah, that's right? so good. And so Jesus understood a purpose. Uh, he had a purpose to connect. He came, he said, I came not uh, for those that are, are whole. Mm -hmm. He said, but he said, the whole don't, those that are well don't need a physician. It's those that are sick that need a physician. So in order to accomplish his assignment or to fulfill his objection, objective, he says, I'll break the rules. Yeah. I'll do something different. And that's what authentic people do. When, when you're authentic, when you're real, when you're genuine, you can't stay in darkness once you've seen the light. That's right. Uh, you don't drink the Kool-Aid because... Kool-Aid is what's always been on the table. Yeah. Right. You you're willing to break out and say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to be true and genuine to who God has made me to be. And I'm going to walk in that person. You can do it quite respectfully. It doesn't have to be a thing to where you start talking about others who aren't doing what you just do what you've been called to do. And that's what we see Jesus do here. Yeah. And it, it's just so powerful because Jesus sat with her and began to ask her questions and 
one of the questions that he asked her, he, he asked her to, um, um, he asked her to go get her husband and tell him, go get your husband and tell him to come here. Now, the one thing I love about Jesus is he didn't waste time talking around a subject. He went right to the heart of the matter. And in this situation, he went right to the heart of the matter. And he said, go get your husband. Inserts a real moment. This woman found the courage to be honest with Jesus and say, uh, here in the text, she says, um, I don't have a husband. Uh, uh, sorry. Yes, yeah, she admits that she didn't have a husband. And then Jesus confirms. He said, yes, that's right. You don't have a husband. And then he began to tell her uh, about the litany of husbands that she's she had. Has. And the one that she's with now is not even her husband. I want to point out right here, Pastor, that she was able to be real with Jesus and Jesus was able to cover that thing. Like, okay, let, let, let me say it like this. Um, she was able to be real through that encounter. Yes. And then Jesus came in and began to speak to her about the situation, about the brokenness that she had. It opened the door, her authenticity opened the door for Jesus to speak life, and for I, Jesus to transform her through her just being real and saying, look, I don't have a husband. She could have faked it. She could have uh, said something that she, she could have lied, but she was real in that moment. Yeah. And I think one of the things we have to understand is, is that, um, we have to learn to embrace the truth, yeah. okay? Um, so many people are living under a false sense of reality, uh, whether it be false doctrine, whether it be um, mm -hmm. something that allows them to avoid um, the reality of life. See, there are realities of life that have nothing to do with how we see an issue or how we feel about an issue. Yeah. There's a reality of life. And one of the things, for example, in this text, and, and you know, we, we, we just, whenever we're teaching and preaching, it's not to bring condemnation, it's to bring clarity. That's Jesus right. didn't come to condemn the world, but he came um, that the whole world through him might be saved. Yeah. So in other words, if you're living in a state that is in conflict with God's word, that is a form of condemnation. Jesus doesn't highlight that, but he brings clarity so mm -hmm. that you can embrace the covenant of blessing. And so here, what Jesus is showing this woman in the text is, is that, that, that you, you've, you've uh, married before mm -hmm. several times and that didn't work. Um, and now you're living or you're cohabitating in a situation where you're not married to this person, but you're literally uh, functioning as if you're married. Um, and some theologians have suggested that this woman uh, perhaps was uh, some form of a prostitute, that, yeah. she, um, that she had relationships with men for favors, for benefits, things of that nature. And so what Jesus is bringing clarity to, and he said, let's just be real now. You're in a state. I'm not coming to condemn you. I'm not coming to put you down. I'm not coming to make you feel um, uh, that you're unacceptable. In fact, I'm here talking with you. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm here to bring a change in your life. I'm here to deal with the situation that you have. Yeah. But but if we're going to deal with it, let's really just get real and 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 deal with the matters at hand because otherwise you cannot advance. And so one of the points that I wanted to share today, and and I'll just interject them as we go along, is mm -hmm. is that authentic people entertain and embrace the truth. Mm. Authentic people entertain and embrace the truth. They entertain it. They, they're not so ready to reject the truth because it's uncomfortable, yeah. right? They're not so ready to reject the truth because it messes with their position. It messes with the status or their self-perception. Uh, authentic people embrace the truth because their desire is to be real. They really don't want to project something. They want to become something. They're not so focused on what people think. 
they're very focused on what they can become. So authentic people entertain and embrace the truth. And I don't know if you've ever been there to where you got made yourself comfortable living with the lie because the truth was going to mess with your status quo. Yeah. And, and so authentic people refuse to do that. They refuse to get comfortable living with the lie they embrace the truth, even though the truth messes with their status quo, even though the truth demands and requires that a change take place. So when Jesus comes, Jesus is always going to challenge the status quo. He's always going to challenge um, the frame of reference and thinking that we have that has been uh, that we've embraced through the things of the world. He's always going to tear that down so that he can reconstruct within us a righteous constitution. Mm. Right. And so this we see clearly in the text. He says, let's let's just get to the heart of the matter. And, and the thing I love about Jesus is, is that he doesn't harp on what her situation was. He goes right back to what is possible for her in that moment. Yes. Yeah, so you know, good. and you have to know that Jesus is not harping on what your situation was, what your struggle is. He wants to talk about the possibilities of the moment. He wants to talk to you about what can happen in your life if you will just embrace what he has for you. Glory to God. And some people think that what Jesus is saying is, 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 um, is putting the burden on you. He says, no, I've got the water. Yeah. <laughs> he says, I've got, you've got a bucket and you've got a rope, but I've got the water. Yeah, right? I, I have the living water. Right. I don't have the water that's just going to temporarily quench your thirst yes. because this lady was literally thirsty, both figuratively and naturally, yeah. right? She was thirsty, hashtag thirsty, right? <laughs> but he said, I have the living water right. uh, that 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 if you drink of this water, you will never be thirsty again. Pastor, I'd like to add, and I want to go back and just share the point that I had been sharing on. I want to make that clear to you what I, uh, what what the actual point was, is that Jesus seeks encounters with us that welcome us into authenticity. Yeah. Um, he, he, he welcomes us into reality. Uh, but I'd like to move on in the text, Pastor, because we see where she was honest with Jesus, where she told him that she had a husband and Jesus confirmed her honesty. But then I see a little bit of a detour in the text where um, the woman does confirm that he is a prophet here in verse 19. She confirms, she says, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And then in verse 20, we see where she changes the subject. Now, I want to put a pen right here because there are times in our lives where we are real for a moment, but then the, the uncomfortability and the uh, the discomfort of being transparent and completely being real, uh, sometimes it begins to be too much. And we decide to go back into our shell of uh, this false reality. She changes the subject and she starts asking him questions about where the ancestors should worship and all yeah. of this stuff. Uh, so it's just interesting that right there, you can kind of perceive that there was some discomfort there, possibly, because yeah. the subject was changed. And, and I think whenever we have a true encounter with Jesus, it, we, we come to that moment where we either have to decide to go further mm -hmm. or decide to draw back. Yes. You know, it's kind of like the young rich ruler that came to Jesus. He had to decide whether or not he was going to go further in dialogue with Jesus about the fact that your issue is, is that you're too attached to the stuff you have. It's not mm -hmm. the stuff you have. Mm -hmm. It's your attachment to it. Yeah. Right. And so we always come to that point where we then have to make a decision. Am I willing to go further? Because clearly she was made uncomfortable by the prophetic essence of Jesus to be able to see into her life and speak into her life. Um, because it it brought her face to face with some insecurities and and inadequacies. Now she's having to look at yes. her life. And and one of the things I want to say, another point that I wanted to make as you look at this text is, is that authentic people, um, they 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 understand uh, that they must acknowledge and face their insecurities. Mm -hmm. Right? Authentic people realize that that the fact that I have an area in my life that is insecure and adequate doesn't mean I should run from it. 
It doesn't define who I am. It doesn't mean that I'm unacceptable, that I can't be loved, that I can't accomplish my goals, that I cannot succeed. It simply is an acknowledgement that I've got some work to do, yeah. right? And then we understand in our faith that it is God that does the work in us as we cooperate. So this woman's life story and, and uh, you know, her life story really, and we don't like to talk about it, her life story reflects uh, our life story mm -hmm. because um, I cannot, I cannot be begin to share the mistakes that I've made in my life, yeah. the areas in my life that if Absolutely. I just stop to dwell on, well, you missed the mark here, you didn't do this, um, or areas in my life where I know, you know, there's sometimes people see me, oh, pastor's got this together, pastor's got that together, but they don't necessarily know the inadequacies that I may have because they don't walk close enough to me to see it. And so um, those that are going to be authentic have to own and acknowledge, I've got some work to do, but it is Christ who will do that work. He's offering me um, the solution. Um, inauthentic people are always uh, passing the buck. They're always making excuses. They're always blaming someone else. They're always, um, they're always um, argumentative and defensive rather than just accepting, yes, this is where I am. Yes, I've got to grow. Yes, I've got some work to do. And that's not to say that's not to say that being authentic means that you accept the weakness That's right. or you accept that there cannot be change. You acknowledge it, but then you face it. And through the power of Christ, you overcome it. That's really, really critical. If you're going to be authentic, stop saying that you're not who everybody has told you that you are. I know there's a lot of teaching today. Don't let people put this on you. Don't let people put that on you. And I get it. That's true. But 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 everybody, as grandmama said, everybody ain't lying, right? When people begin to share with you their certain characteristics, especially people that, that care about you, you know they care about you, before you reject it, before you say, no, it's you, just acknowledge it. Yes. And then through prayer and through a application of the word, allow God to grow you through that area. The prerequisite for this woman at the well to get the water was to accept the truth that Jesus was giving her, Amen. to embrace it, to acknowledge it in spite of her insecurities, and then let God do the work in her to make her what she should be. That's so good, Pastor. You know, when I think about this text, I think about us, um, about people and how uh, while we should be concerned about our brothers and sisters, I believe we have become too people focused mm. and too people centered. Yes. Where, you know, and then that focus promotes this fleshly desire to be uh, just like this well put together person, this person who doesn't have any flaws, this person who. Um, just gets everything right all the time. And the reality is that as long as we are encased in this flesh, we will make error. We will make uh, mistakes. That's why it's so important for us to be submitted to the Lord so he can work his will out in our lives. You know, in this text, uh, theologians uh, say that this woman will go to the uh, uh, will go to the well at high noon right. to draw water because that was when uh, no, one no one was there. Yeah. Everybody else would go in the morning uh, when the, when the sun wasn't at its highest peak, but she would go at high noon, the most brutal time to draw water because her shame was so heavy. She did not want to hear the whisper. She didn't want to see the eyes. She didn't want to experience the women that were trying to keep their husbands away from her, whatever it was. Her shame was so heavy that she was unable to, to really do what needed to be done. So I just see that we're so people focused. And when I really think about, um, church culture, I want to say that it has made it very difficult for people to be honest and to be real and to show up in their broken space. Well, and I think that's, you know, when the Lord gave us the theme, real people, real worship, real ministry, I, that's the heart of it. Yes. That, that um, we're not, the standard of holiness will not change for anyone. Yeah. God's standard is holiness. But how do I get there? Yes. I get there through a community that is willing to walk with me, willing to worship with me, willing mm -hmm. to minister to me, willing to give to me without highlighting the things about my life that have been shameful. Yes. Right. Or even are shameful today. 
right? And so all of the practices and the way that we do church, how we correct, um, how we encourage, yeah. right? How we give grace, all yes. of these things. And not so just true. in the church, um, this goes true in our homes uh, many times. And we've talked about this in marriage ministry and in singles ministry as well. Many times people's relationships are, are uh, directed by past shame, past things they've been involved yes. in. Right. And, and so there's things sometimes they don't feel shame, but what they were in was shameful. Was shameful. And so That's now good. it is affecting how all of their relationships take shape. And so we we have to create this authentic community where I can uh, share my authentic um, self and then uh, progress in growth and development with Christ until I come into the image of his dear son and yes. holiness. The standard of holiness doesn't change. It doesn't change. And oftentimes Amen. in the church, I think we're afraid to be real because we don't want to, uh, we, we don't want to weaken the standard of holiness. Yeah. Listen, holiness is God's standard that can, it's, it's non-negotiable. It cannot be changed. We must all embrace that as our standard and our measurement and move and progress toward it. We cannot make excuses for it, but we got some work to do to yes. measure up to it. We have some work to do to come into it. If I look back over my life and see where I was 20 years ago in Christ, I was saved, but but I, I, I was not at the level of maturity or development that I am today. Yes. Someone had to be patient towards me. Someone had to show grace. And um, you know, I'm transparent. So expect during this season of authenticity, that we'll talk some about some really real things, okay? Uh, I'm very transparent because I believe that authentic people are transparent, not uh, not um, transparent in a way that is uh, just gratuitous, yes. but they're purposefully transparent. Uh, they're strategically transparent because they understand those moments of transparency can impact people's lives and people maybe that are not measuring up today say, well, if pastor can be real and say he wasn't always on that level, I can get there too, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh, transparent for that purpose and that reason. And that was really what Jesus was demanding uh, gently and lovingly from this woman at the well. Let's really get down and talk about the real issues that you're dealing with because I don't want you to just come to church and shout. I don't want you just to say we had a great time um, uh, uh, in, 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 in service today. I want you to have a life change that will bring you out of this cycle of brokenness and disappointment and shame and patterns that are driven by your shame. I want to see you experience something that is very dramatic and transformative in your life. Um, if I could share something, Pastor, I, I would I would just like to put this point out there that authentic encounters with God in, enable us. Authentic encounters with God yes, enable us. Absolutely. When we read this text, we see that, and this is something that I often share uh, when I'm teaching or preaching, that in this text, it shows that after she had this encounter with Jesus and um, she... Uh, she revealed herself to him about what her challenge was. And Jesus began to speak life into her. He began to tell her, but the hour cometh and the hour is now when, when, when the true worshiper shall worship me in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter where you worship, whether you're in the mountaintop or if you're in the valley, but if you're worshiping me with a true heart, with a true spirit, through the truth of the word of God, that is what real worship is. Then it speeds along to, through the text and it says she dropped her water pot and she ran into the city of Samaria preach it and all, began preach it all. to tell, I got to preach it all. She dropped her water pot, began to ran, run into the city of Samaria and evangelize that city and tell them, come see a man that told me everything I've ever done. He must be the Messiah. That authentic encounter with God enabled her to step into a purpose that she probably could have never dream, dreamed about, that people around her probably never dreamed about. But encounters with God transform, liberate, and enable us 
to be who God has called us to be, even if we've had a past. God doesn't care about that. God says, bring your past to me. Absolutely. And I will be the one that will wash you white as snow. So I just feel like it's so beautiful, Pastor, that in this text, it's showing that it's not saying that I don't want you to be holy because the word says, be ye holy for he is holy. But there is a process. And I think many times we preach the end of the process, but we don't preach saying that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but I'm just saying oftentimes we don't hear about the process when we read through um when we read through the text and we hear those scriptures like jeremiah 29 and 11 that says uh i have an expected end for you a plan of peace a plan of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end we got to understand that there's some stuff that happened before that in between that and after that right but we pull out that yeah. text and I, I think the challenge is is we've become so accustomed to churching, right? Yes. So, so much of our preaching is driven toward getting people to rejoice, to shout, to celebrate. And while that is important, um, it, it's much better if I'm shouting the victory mm. as opposed to a sh I'm shouting to cover my sin, right? And so I Say think that again. It, it's much more important if we're shouting the victory than shouting to cover our sin. We've yes. gotten so focused on churching. If the choir sang good, if the pastor hit his third gear, mm -hmm. um, if, if, if the dance came, if all of those things happen, then we say we had church today. But yeah. the real measure of church is how are we discipling? How are people growing in the faith so that they can take of the word of God, apply it to their life and get tailor-made results, yes. right? And that's the true measure. And that's why it comes back to being authentic. And, and so you went into authentic worship, authentic ministry. I'm sorry. You, no, no, you're okay. <laughs> but, 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 I got but, excited. But it all, it all connects together. It starts with us being real. It starts yes. with us taking our focus off of the church hour and putting our focus on the kingdom hour. The kingdom hour is about growing in the grace of God to become the image of his dear son. Yeah. That's what the kingdom hour is about. And so if we had good church and I'm walking around the house not speaking to you, we haven't accomplished anything. There's been no impact. There's, There's been, been no, no impact. kingdom impact. It was just really a working off of some calories. Right. And but so, that was it. But 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 no real change. And what we see in the text here is that, Pastor, that authentic encounter with God promoted real change. Right. And and I, I think sometimes we just lack that authenticity where we can say we had church. But there's no fruit that yeah. well, that, that's it, what that we're shows. doing. We have to build it. We, we have, have to, to build. build it. We have to build authenticity, starting with ourselves. Amen. So I've got to be real with myself about who I am. And let me say this: I, 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 I want to say this in all humility. I'm not holding myself out to be anything great or anything. Um, you know, I, by the grace of God, I am what I am. But but I learned many many years ago that the the authority of my ministry was in my authenticity, mm, yeah. right? If there's something that I believe will impact the kingdom, okay, about uh, in my life, I'm willing to share it authentically for the kingdom to be impacted. There's nothing about who I am, what I've done, how I've lived, where I've come short, what I am not, that I would withhold for the sake of building the kingdom. Mm. Um, there's, I, I walk honestly with God about my shortcomings or areas where I need to grow. I have real conversations with God about things in my heart that I know. Um, and and I, I teach and share about things in my heart where, uh, where times where maybe someone offended me and I'm carrying that with me or times in my life where my thought life is not what it should be. I walk honestly with God and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, you have to help me with this. Yeah. You, you have to bring me into a place to where I can fulfill the calling. You promised that who you called, you then would qualify. And I'm asking you to do that. And so it is through this uh, that, that, the, that God has given me a grace on my life for this, for this type of ministry. And I love, I, I love the church in. Yeah. Uh, sometime I almost I grieve too. over the, the passing of the church age, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and I referred to it in, in jest as back when God was moving. 
I love that. I love to shout, dance. I love to speak in tongues. I love to 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 experience the power of the Pentecostal uh, worship uh, service. I love all of that. I love the sound of choirs. Thank God for praise teams, but give me a mass choir any day. I love that. Yeah. I love that. But but the reality is, no matter how the choir sings, if I don't get up off the floor and walk out transformed, it's all been for naught. Amen. Right. And so a transformation happens in pieces. It happens through time. It happens um, in doses. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I got the first my first dose of the vaccine um, this past week, but I've got to go back and get another dose in order to be fully vaccinated. And so God gives us transformation in doses. You should always be growing authentically with Christ. Never ever ex accept, never ever accept, um, uh, never ever accept uh, to be in a stagnant state to where you're not growing, where you're not developing. Well, we're out of time. We're going to continue this conversation Tuesday night. I want to give you one more point um, that, that I wanted to share with you about authentic people. Authentic people, and we're going to pray after this. Authentic people rely on the power of the divine. Mm. They rely on the power of God, the power yeah. of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. They rely on the power of the divine. They understand the limitations of their humanity. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter two, I believe it's uh, maybe verse 24, it's the last two verses. And it talks about how people were celebrating Jesus. And it said, but Jesus did not commit himself to them for he knew what was in man. He understood the nature of hu human, he understood human nature. He understood um, how man is. And he understood that there's limitations in what man can accomplish. So authentic people understand that there's work that God has to do in me. And I've got to position myself for God to do that work. I'm relying on his power. I'm not using that as an excuse not to do the work. Let, let me leave that. I'm not using that as an excuse not to do the work. But, but I know that ultimately it's the power of Christ and my submission to him that is going to bring that transformation. Amen. And I want to encourage you today to be real. When you have a conversation with Jesus, Jesus is always going to bring things to the surface that you've never looked at or you've never looked at that way. He's going to bring things up and he's going to show you, you not for the point of condemning you, but to give you an opportunity to embrace life to embrace transformation, to embrace change. Glory to, Glory to God. We don't want to be a church that just has church, that, 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 that just builds buildings, and we're going to build some more buildings. We don't be, want to be a church that just gathers in the pews. We want to be a people that are transformed into the image of God, into the image of his dear son, Jesus the Christ. We want to be a people that move and operate under the anointing of God. God is not going to anoint your representative. God is not going to anoint your substitute, but God wants to anoint you, who he crafted and made you to be. With your brokenness, with your shortcomings, the power of Christ will come in and build you up and allow you to experience new life in Christ. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, creature, creation. Old things are passed away past. In other words, it's a process. And behold, all things are become new. We're real people. I don't care about your shortcomings. I don't care about what you've done. I don't care about what people said or know about you. I care about the purpose for which God created you and placed you in the earth. I care about the future that God has crafted for you. Jesus knew that this woman who had been forgotten in Samaria had a great future. All she needed was a real authentic conversation at a well. A conversation that challenged the tradition, that challenged the oral history that had been passed down of Jacob and Joseph and who begot who. But a history that traced back to our creator. God Almighty was deposited in us all that is necessary for the things of godliness and new life. I want to pray for you now. I pray that this word is really connected with your spirit. And I want to say to you that if you're not saved, 
If you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, this morning, Jesus is standing at the well of your life with all of your brokenness, all of the mistakes. Some of you have not connected with the church. And I keep preaching, you need to connect with the church, the organized church. Some of you have not connected with the church because of the problems in the church. But don't throw away the church because of the things that you see that have not been right. Join in and help to build the church into the kingdom of God. Lend what you bring to the table and perfect with the church even as you share your gifts glory to god god loves you so much and if you're not saved today all you've got to do is confess your sins and invite the lord jesus into your heart say i want you to be the lord of my life i i yield give me this water change my life the text says that the water that jesus gives would be like a welling bubbling up continual refreshing, continual washing, continual cleansing. That's what happens when you accept the living water of life that Jesus gives. I want to pray for you now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your intentionality. And we thank you that you are a real God that deals with us according to the reality of our life. Nothing is hidden from you, and we don't have to try to hide it. There's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no sin that is too great for you to deal with. There's no problem, no shortcoming, no adversity. Lord, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So we ask you now, Lord, to stretch out your hand and to touch us. Lord, start the process of transformation from this day forward. We want to be real. We're willing to forsake everything that we've known in order to have a real relationship with you. We're willing to abandon traditions and trappings that hinder us from seeing your glory. We're willing to do whatever is necessary, God, to conform to your word as you've given it. Let your spirit now saturate us. Let it fall in every home, God, throughout this virtual sanctuary. Let your spirit fall to save. Let your spirit fall, oh God, to bring healing and restoration, to remove shame and guilt in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow, God, even as we return unto you authentically. Do it for thine own glory. Do it, oh God, that your name would be made great. Do it, oh God, that we shall know that we matter to you. Do it, oh God, to know that we may know that you've not given up on us, that you won't throw us away, you won't forsake us. God, even as we prepare to partake of your supper, we pray, God, that this union would remind us that we all have had a past. We've all come short. We've all had struggles. But it's through your power and through your grace that you've unified us and you've called us your bride. You've called us your bride. You've called us your bride. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you would continue to work on us throughout this month. Where things have been hidden, where things have been undercover, Lord, we pray that you would bring them to the surface, that we might renounce them. And that we might accept your grace and your power to build us. Be glorified in our life. And yet we walk in dominion and take authority over every foul spirit that would seek to keep us from being authentic. Every trick of the enemy, every deception, every stronghold, we bind it now in the name of Jesus. And we speak a release, oh God, that we might be our authentic self. Scars and wounds, oh God, we bind them up now. The authority of accusations, oh God, we bind them up now. We plead the blood, oh God, over every individual under the sound of my voice. Let your blood cover and wash away, oh God, every hindrance in the name of Jesus. We take authority over the intimidation of the enemy. We take authority over the accusations of Satan. 
And we thank you now, God, that you are affirming us as your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your anointing and your spirit. Refresh us and revive us, oh God, that we might go forth and carry out your will and purpose. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for it. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're not saved, come on right now. Just say, Lord, I come to you right now. I confess my sins. Forgive me. Save me. Help me to live for you from this day forward. I receive the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just worship the Lord and bless the Lord in this virtual sanctuary? Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. You're worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Well, listen, glory to God. We're going to share in our Holy Communion here in a moment. But if you're not a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church and you don't have a church home, I want to invite you to come and be a part of this authentic community. We're determined. We're determined to live Christ. Hallelujah. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. If you're not a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church and you don't have a church family, I don't care where you are. Send us an inbox and tell them, I want to be a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. Just drop that inbox and leave it up there and we'll get back to you and we'll connect with you. And we will allow you uh, to be a part of us because we'll be so blessed to have you with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just send an inbox right now and say, I'm in. I want to be a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. God bless you. So good to have our dear friend from Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. God bless you. What a joy to have you with us. Glory to God. That's it. If you want to be a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal, some of you all have been watching. You've been coming along, but but you haven't joined us yet. You need to be a part of a church family that knows it's not this church, some church, where the word of God is being taught and there's an authentic community to help support you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're getting ready to share in Holy Communion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Bonnie. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get your communion ready. We're going to share in communion. Great juice and crackers or bread. If you don't have great juice, you can use any type of juice or even water. Glory to God. We're going to share in Holy Communion. On this morning. Come on back home, Brother Daniel. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Come on back home. We'll walk with you, son. Come on back home. Hallelujah. 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 Get your communion elements ready. As we prepare to share, it's a beautiful day outside, but we're celebrating what the Lord has done for us and how he has blessed us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank glory you, to God. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says that the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he did all of this for us, you all. He knew the problems that we would have in this life. But he said, I'm going to give myself for you. The same night he was betrayed, he took bread and it said, this is my body that has been broken for you. Mm. Glory to God. He said, take ye it and eat ye all of it. Glory to God. Take and eat now.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the same night he also took the cup and he said, this is my blood that is shed for you. Take and drink ye all of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank Hallelujah. You. We thank God for this moment of sharing and communion and this wonderful service today. Glory to God. We give God praise and glory for the word. We pray that you have been strengthened and edified. We're going to continue teaching on, authentic, on authenticity, uh, being authentic on Tuesday night, real people. And we're excited for what God is going to do. Remember, tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., we return to our prayer uh, time. Uh, join in for us. Glory to God. And uh, we will be in prayer each morning at 6.30 a.m. And then Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we will be um, in uh, the Word of God right back here on Facebook Live and on our conference line. Well, listen. Love each of you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Oh, yes. Don't forget to give. Thank God for my technology time uh, team reminding us to give your tithe and your offerings. You can do that through Givelify or by mailing it into the church. Be sure to give. You all have been doing a tremendous job. Thank you so much for a tremendous job with your best gift in the month of February. Let's remain faithful and God is going to continue to bless us. Thank God for Elder Sue Jones' son, Daniel, praise coming God. back in and joining with us today. We praise God. Praise We're God. continuing to grow and to experience an increase in the things of God. So excited. Heaven is rejoicing. Yes. Glory to God. Heaven is rejoicing. Glory to God. Even as those uh, that have known the Lord are coming back saying, I want to serve the Lord and walk with the Lord. God bless you. Before you run out, say hello to somebody. Say goodbye to somebody. If you were blessed by the word, let us know. God bless you, Sister Shante. We're praying for you. God bless you, Sister Maria, Sister Lisa. God bless you, Donisa. God bless you, Sister Tish. God bless you, Sister Felicia. Donisa, I still need your zip code, daughter. God bless you, Elder Sue. God bless you, Sister Doris. God bless you. God bless you, Mother Brenda. Praise God. I don't know why I keep calling you mother, but I just keep calling you mother. God bless you, Minister Vivian. Mother Rosie, God bless you. Brother BJ, you're out of order, son. God bless you, Sister Cynthia. To God be the glory. God bless you, Sister Catherine. We love you. God bless you, Elder Pusley. Bless you. God bless you, Sister Thomasina, Sister Lisa. God bless you. How many of you know that Jesus is real? God bless you, Sister Kyra, Brother Paul. God bless you, sir. Praise God. God bless you, Brother Tim. God bless you, Shay. God bless you, Brother Herbert. God bless you. God bless you, Bobby, back in Atlanta. All right. Glory to God. Good to see you. God bless you, Sister Carol. Brother Devin, bless you, man. You as well. God bless you, Sister Carla and the Coward family. Brother Bruce. Yeah. This word has connected with so my God spirit. Praise God. We love the Reeds and the Jacksons. God bless, God bless you. you, Sister Lisa. Oh, wow. So God be the glory, Reverend Cutler. Keep praying for us. Praise God bless God. Mother Cutler. God bless you, Sister Keisha. So God be the glory. God, God bless you, my young Hallelujah, it's not over, it's not over. God bless you, Sister Harriet. 
Hallelujah. He's real. How many of you know that Jesus is real? Oh, yeah. Glory to God. If you know he's real, shout yes. <laughs> Glory to God. He's real. How many of you know he's real? Do you know he's real? Do you know he's real? God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you. We love you so much. See you tomorrow morning, 6:30. God bless you.